welcome, welcome, welcome to this mini episode. I do these every, try and do these every week. Um, because, yeah, there's a lot of just stuff, isn't it? A lot of stuff to go through. <laughs> mini episode of this. Um, I'm just kind of waffling. But yeah, I do these mini episodes because I see that it's just useful to kind of like get to a point, or get on to a point of something that's really kind of poignant and there that I'm seeing in people's lives. And I just ran a, a workshop a couple of days ago about um creating the spark and dating and stuff and one of the things that came up for for the men in there was like fears and worries about feeling like self-doubt insecurity worthiness when feeling like they're they're good enough um in their dating life so i thought i would uh, touch on some of the points i touched on not so much in the workshop actually that i came i came to when i was explaining some points um to someone else afterwards and then something i wrote on instagram as well um but if dating is something that's really alive for you and you really want to make some changes in your dating life in 2024 god i can't believe the year's almost there um i'm running a dating program called men's the men's dating accelerator and it's really about shifting gears in your mind in your body in the way you act the way you lead the way you assertive in your dating life and your confidence as well as a byproduct of that because that's one of the things i see in men is that their confidence is low they don't take action and they they feel shitty and it kind of spirals around so this is really about getting you into action with the knowledge i'm giving you um, around like expressing yourself, self-expression, whether that's words, the way you pronounce, the way you express, the way you show up, the, the the body language you use, as well as some mastery around online dating. I've got a special guest coming in to teach a session about online dating, profiles, messaging, like getting people on dates, the whole shebang, because that's really important as well. And I'm going to touch on some stuff around mindset, around um fears around overcoming fears overthinking and all that kind of stuff that's really really imperative as well as talking about what i want to talk about today around self-doubt and security worthiness as well so let's get into this one yeah right so how do you tackle you know self-doubt insecurity unworthiness in, in our dating lives i'm going to talk firstly about some ways that this shows up Right. So these are these are a number of ways, six ways that insecurity, self doubt, and unworthiness can can kind of cut us off from from connection, right? Real connection, you know, in our dating lives, right? So one of the things that shows up is that if you are feeling insecure, you often project your insecurities onto the women you meet, meaning that you are kind of looking for signs of that they are showing you you're not good enough. If you don't think you're good enough, you don't think you're interesting you're going to be talking to women and you're almost um, looking out for signs of the thing you're afraid of. So if you're afraid of rejection, you're going to start having a conversation, for instance, on a date, and you're going to see like, oh, she's looking away or, oh, she looked at her time, she looked at her phone. Oh, she doesn't want to be on a date with me. She wants to leave. And then that will affect your mood and affect how you think about yourself on the date and you'll start to collapse, to be honest. That's what happens a lot then start to collapse like energetic collapse even physically start to collapse like start to to kind of shrink in towards themselves you will also project onto them you know the women you meet them showing you that you're not valuable you're not worthy and it won't always be them doing a thing it will be you see signals in how they're acting and you'll be like oh that means they're not interested or they said this thing in a certain way that means they're not interested in me or that i'm not good enough <clears throat> and because you feel that about yourself already, you're hypersensitive to anyone else seeing it because you don't want them to see it. You're afraid of them seeing it, right? It can also look like you're assuming that people aren't interested in you or they're judging you negatively because of any tiny little thing because you've got anxiety or you're a bit paranoid or you're reluctant to open up. So maybe you start to express how you feel and you perceive a signal from somebody. And I say signal because it can be anything. It could be a body language it could be something they say it could be something they don't say right it could be the length of time they respond to what you're saying and you then immediately give meaning to that signal to that thing and you say that means that they're rejecting me they're not interested in me they don't find me interesting they don't like my expression right another thing we see, i see a lot with men is comparison right comparing yourself to other people or people that they've dated or the woman in front of you going oh they're not i'm not good enough comparing yourself and going I'm not good enough there is another flip side to this which is comparing yourself to other people and being like I'm too good for them which is another way that we like keep ourselves from connection because if I look at other people and I go oh I'm better than you you're not good enough for me to date 
then that creates a, a, a distance, a um, separation. Because it's like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you or you're not worthy of my time. But it's actually another mechanism we use to protect ourselves from from pain or not looking good or, um, you know, even falling in love and loving someone. It's a way to keep distance between us and someone else. Even when we say that we really want a relationship, we do these sorts of things. What I see most commonly, this is something I see in... Um, this is a, sorry, this is a way that we avoid them. And in particular, right, in particular, I've seen with them, is um, what they do is they see a potential partner and they meet someone and they find they, they go into a kind of critical hyper-focused mode on, on thoughts and issues and problems in the person. So they might see a fault in somebody like, oh, um, they don't share food, for instance, on a first date. Like, you know, you say, oh, let's share some food. And they're like, oh, I don't share food. And then suddenly we're like, oh, they don't share food. Oh, that's terrible. I can't be with someone that doesn't share food because if they don't share food, they can never be, they can never come to my family house because we all share food on one table and people are always sharing food. And if they can't be with my family, then we could never be together because the relationship can't work because they won't get along with my family. And you just see there, we've taken one small thing and you've blown it up into being everything, right? And it being this massive problem from this tiny thing that they don't want to share some chips with you to being this whole thing that they could never get along with your family. And I, I say this because these are things I've seen in myself and I've seen in my clients as well, or it might be even down to, um, it can be down to looks. Uh, it could be down to their needs. Like, oh, they have a need. I don't think I'd ever fulfill that need. Um, so this relation can never go anywhere. And we don't usually jump from, oh, I can't fulfill that need so they can never go anywhere. It's usually quite a story that gets built up about the future. Like, oh, they have this need where they need reassurance. And you might go, oh, and this is all kind of conscious and unconscious conversation is, oh, I can't give people reassurance because I've failed in the past. So I can't give this person the reassurance they need. So this relationship is going to be really difficult and she's going to get upset, you know, in the future and all the way along the way. And there's nothing I can do and she'll just be miserable and unhappy with me. So we can never be together. It's usually along those lines, right? In the mind. So how do you tackle it? So different ways, but well, not different ways. This is like a step-by-step -step almost. Um, the root cause is important to get to understand the root cause or the, or the triggering event. Because often we think the triggering event is like outside of us, that someone, something someone else does, right? But like the triggering event is often actually kind of in ourselves, you know, us feeling insecure, us feeling um, self-doubt, us feeling unworthy. And then someone just says something and then we attach those feelings to what they said or what they've done, right? So it's becoming more and more aware of the, the sort of things that cause you to um, perceive rejection and assume rejection's happening. Like, oh, if a woman, I tell her about my deepest feelings and sadness about my cat that ran away and a woman doesn't like ask me loads about how I feel and seem really empathetic, I assume that that's a rejection. It's like, okay, why is that? Like, okay... You know, I know that in past relationships that women have not really wanted to know how I feel or I believe the narrative that women don't really care about men's vulnerability and they just want to take advantage or I've been in a relationship in the past where a woman has weaponized my sadness against me, knowing what the root cause is. Because then you can start to see when this is going to come up and you can start to separate between what's actually happening and what you're assuming is happening as well and sometimes that's very hard to do alone um because we can often believe that our story is the truth um and not want to believe that we're just making it up in our heads challenging these negative thoughts important telling them sometimes it's a writing exercise like is this true is this thing definitely happening in the way that i'm telling myself is this thing going to happen in the way that i'm telling myself is there any other option for how this is going to pan out for instance, with the example I talked about, the not sharing of food, it's like going, is this thing, is this story exactly how it's going to happen? Like, can I, is this undeniable? And the truth is, is no, someone might change. Or maybe I got the wrong end of the stick about the sharing of food. Maybe this person would be open to sharing food if it was something, you know, maybe they just wanted those chips for themselves that day. They really fancied some chips. It's like looking at things, not just from our singular lens and our kind of, um, tunnel vision way of thinking of things it's like looking at the what could be true and uh, what other options are there as well another is self-compassion 
you need the self-compassion in this because otherwise when you have these these moments of insecurity, these moments of self-doubt, these moments of, of assuming uh, negativity about yourself and others, if you don't have self-compassion and you just add to it by beating yourself up like, oh, I shouldn't, I should stop, you know, assuming rejection or it's all my fault, I've created this. You need to have self-compassion. It's a really important element in in, in this sort of work of, of, of growth because you need to look at yourself and go, ah, yeah, I made that mistake again. That's cool. Okay, I understand. And sometimes even laughing. You know, I, I used to create quite a lot of jokes out of these sorts of things. Um, you know, I remember me and Ahmad years ago, we, we even gave our, our kind of fearful inner voice a, a name, you know, so we could almost talk about it as it was about us. Like, you know, our oh, shook man is taking over my mind right now. All I can think of what's going to go wrong in my life. You know, it, it gives it a comedy element because it is quite funny in many ways. Another thing is to take action in line with what you want and what you would really love to happen and not taking in line action in line with what you fear and what you're trying to mitigate against. So if you're trying to avoid rejection, if so taking line taking action in line with avoiding rejection is actually taking action in line of trying to mitigate rejection, which often leads to more rejection. Because say, for instance, in a dating sense, like, okay, I don't want to get rejected. So I'm not going to ask anyone out on the date. I'm not going to be on dating apps. Or I'm not going to make an effort on my profile or um, I'm not going to try and, you know, make a move on this girl that's in front of me. All those things will lead to a deeper sense of rejection, right? And that's the action. Whereas if we are moving towards what we love, which is like connecting deeply or asking that go out, we take that action because it actually builds self-confidence. We might experience a rejection, but we experience a self-confidence because we took the action. And that's a really important thing as well. And that's that kind of engaging in action that rewires our assumptions about ourselves. And also taking those actions and having like a open mind, and not assuming. And this is probably the hardest part because we're so used to assuming that there's something wrong with us or, or others think there's something wrong with us that we have to take those actions of say, you know, talking to the woman or um, I keep thinking of relationship examples. They're not useful in this case, but like asking the, asking the woman out on a date, asking for a number. And if she says no, it's like not collapsing into our existing story of like, oh, it's because I'm not good enough or I'm too short, sure, I'm unattractive. It's like, oh, maybe she's, you know, she just didn't want to. That's cool. You know, into a different story. Um, and that's it. That's not, sorry, that's one of the things that's really important. It's like consistently doing action, taking action that way and being supported in that because there's times where you're on your own and it's going to be really hard to stay in that mindset. And this is where like coaching is really powerful and therapy is really powerful because you might bring an action you've taken to your therapist and be like, oh, I'm feeling really low because this thing didn't go the way I wanted to. And then they ask you a bunch of questions or they talk to you and you realize that actually the, the feeling you're having, the sadness, the upset, the pain, isn't in line with what actually happened and you've overblown it because it's part of your existing story and narrative about yourself and your own failure and, and so forth. I also believe that connecting consistently to our outcomes we want is really important. That could be visualization, that could be um, mantras, it can be through breath work, like all those things like really bringing your mind to the actions, activities and end results you want on a regular basis to counteract your existing negative assumptions that you have about yourselves and how things will turn out. Very important piece. And the last thing I'm going to touch on is um, have people around you to guide and support you. I kind of touched on this before about therapy and coaching, but like it's so important to have people around you who have a positive mindset, right? Who are have your best interests at heart and who will be honest with you. This is also a really important one because the honesty is really important because your friends won't always be honest with you because they don't want to hurt you. They, they, they're more concerned about your feelings. Whereas someone who is, so we say, um, not attached to your outcome and your growth, but is there to support you, is going to be honest with you and might show you like, hey, actually, do you see how in that interaction you were a dick or you were selfish or you weren't being particularly aware of their emotions or you didn't really express the full range of who you are? Like, do you think things would have turned out differently if you had stepped into that way of being? That sort of challenge, that sort of um, reflection can be incredibly useful. Like I would not be where I am today 
making this podcast and so forth without the really honest reflections of coaches and therapists and peers and men's groups and all things like that. So those are really important in this this journey of growth because it's very easy to find people who just pay lip service and they'll kind of yes people to you and tell you what you want to hear and tell you that, you know, you're so worthy, you're so great all the time. It's a surprise you don't have a girlfriend when the truth is, is that you're lacking in certain areas to really meet the person you want and you need to upskill yourself in those in those areas and do that work. So yeah, I'm just going to finish today off with to let you know about the program that I'm running, the Men's Dating Accelerator. It's happening in June and February of uh, 2014, depending on when you listen to this. Um, and it's really just a five session mini course. Like it's really going to be short, not short and snappy. It's going to be 90 minutes each session. They're going to be live. It's really about impacting your levels of communication, how you land with people, how people feel you, you know, looking at your lifestyle for the ways in which you could be meeting more women or more women of the type that you want to meet, helping you with those negative beliefs, helping you in that kind of embodying leadership and assertiveness. This seems to be a very common trait in men that struggle in the dating world is a lack of leadership and assertiveness in their own life, but also in, in their dating lives as well. And also, like I said, to create that online mastery as well, because it's a really big part of dating, but not the only part, because we will be talking about meeting people in real life in the program and getting you to do that as well. So if you're interested in the program, the link is below in the show notes and you can just sign up. There's a there's a link there for you to go and purchase that on my website until the end of November, which is only a few days away now. Um, it's £150, which is nothing. Like if you compare the most of my... Um, online programs around the kind of 1600 pounds mark um this is really really reasonable and i'm just it's more of a case of i just want this gift to people who follow me who listen to my content or who are struggling in these you know difficult economic times as well so that price doesn't become a barrier that you know if you if you're not signing up for this and your dating life isn't going well it's not money it's it's your willingness to kind of face yourself and then i can only help you so far in that so if you're willing to say, I want to face myself, but I'm scared to do so, then go click the button and, and go through the process because it will help you. Just signing up was going to help you basically because it will make you face your fear. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's it. Until next week. Ciao, ciao.